Greetings, Summoners. Welcome back to the Champion's Corner. We are joined by the world champ, the GOAT, Caleb. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. As you can see, I'm in, you know, vacation right now, so... Yeah, enjoying yeah. enjoying your win. And, of course, yeah. I did mention it in my last video, but I got to bring it up here as well. For maybe those who don't know, you also won Pro Tour 1, the very start. So you are both the first winner that we had in Battle Spirits and now the last one for the 23-24 season. So tell me overall, you've got a nice chunk of change for this year. Of course, all the Grand Open Tops as well. You know, tell me how you're feeling. Any big plans? Like, kind of, where, where does it go from here for you? Yeah, no, it feels amazing. Um, it's just, like, so funny, like, looking back at this. Like, you know, winning the first, winning the last. Like, before this, I was, like, after Ohio, like, when I, I went, like, X2, I did, like, okay. I was, like, just sitting down. I'm, like, I put so much time in this. I'm, like, was it worth it? And I guess the answer I kind of explains for itself. It was. <laughs> yeah, definitely on like, definitely on this side of it, you gotta be feeling pretty good. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I, I mean, I'm gonna be pretty boring with the money. I'll probably just invest it, but you know, such is life. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, especially without everything else is, it's nice to put a little money away just in case something else does come up and have a little uh, you know, nest egg for yourself. But kind of the big topic and I guess this does lean a little bit into the set two news that we got today so for those that missed it uh, we are going to have double color cards and the chain mechanic which rewards you for playing two colors in a deck so if you have a yellow spirit just for example if you have a purple symbol on your board it's going to get an additional effect when it attacks now that's just a high level what we think is going to happen and you played a card that says hey I have all symbols. I get to do everything. So uh, are we going to ban Smag before August? You know, tell us a little bit about the deck uh, that you played and you won Worlds with and where you think it actually fits going into, you know, set four and, well, maybe even set five. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, well, you know, well, let's, like, preface this. You know, I got Axe Spider banned. So. <laughs> <laughs> Fair call. Oh, no. <laughs> all right, you're not allowed to play. So, uh, you're not allowed to play blue in set four, please. Uh, that's I, I'm so. begging you. Leave my Hydra out of this. So smog might be you know on the hit list. Who knows? Uh, no, but uh, no. Uh, the reason why I like the deck so much is that I put my own style into it, right? Like the white control. Yep. I, I, I just love that. You know, I love like the white top end, and I but I just didn't really like any of the nexuses because it seemed like everyone was gonna be playing what six to eight nexuses. And I'm like, if I just play, bring a deck that has no nexuses and everyone's playing Burning Forces and stuff, I feel like I'm just already ahead. So that was like my first thing with the with the ramp deck. Well, I mean, yeah, and honestly, like, hmm, yeah, it's, it's just a good deck, I think. And uh, moving forward, you have the deck can do anything, right? As long as you have the core ramp cards, then you can pretty much do anything with the deck. I will say from like this early deck building, I probably will stray away from the white top end just because Ira is just too good of a card. So, you know, you can't really be playing Enterprise or uh, <laughs> Scatty. Yeah, you can't, really, you can't really bring those into your deck, unfortunately. That'd be, you know, just, you know, it's just easy card to die. So, yeah. But, yeah. And you, and you talk about, like, the early ramp. So just for those that uh, don't know or aren't familiar with the list, like I said, I'll put an image up there. But so we have Mattingall, you know, being your early early drop. You have your Alarune, which is usually turn two if, like, you get hit, and there's some early ramp as well. Um, and then also Smag are kind of three th key three pieces. Um, and in some earlier versions of the list, we also got to see the magic card that ramps you a core. So what do you think is a more optimal number? Like, were you happy with the, what was that, 12? Four, yeah, 4, 8, 12 uh, that were ended up running? did you wish you would have cut out on us uh one card over the other you know between those three which was really like the highest performing and like the lowest end just in case people want to you know trim some of the numbers or do you just run a full 12 every time going forward um i guess do every counting smag is ramp all right you, loosely we... yes but i guess technically okay. in this instance okay so i guess 12 is then i think i feel like 12 is probably the minimum um if you're including smog for me i don't really count it because a lot of times i'll play it turn one but uh so i in my head it's like eight to it's like basically eight to twelve um and the reason why we didn't manticle was because you know no Beldegore. um drawing two of them going second is like just like disgusting yeah i mean just playing two at a time is just ugh. and um so yeah i think i like 12 um i figured in my testing i only needed a uh, uh just two ramp guys usually and it's you know Perfectly fine. Like, I'm playing a slower play style, you know. 
I'm I'm you know, I'm taking my turns and stuff, so I never felt like I needed more ramp. Um, you probably can with strong draw. I mean, because that's what I was doing anyway. Basically, strong draw just read draw three cards basically because I was just ditching useless cards anyway. So you you know anywhere from like twelve, uh, including you know this mod twelve to sixteen is fine. But what, I prefer to play the least amount. What were some of the other uh, you know? Did you get a chance to try? We mentioned Nobelduer, right? Which is what we saw in some of the lists that had. Uh, Heaven's Cloak Butterfly, for example, which is the four drop that can get up to 5k. Um, were there any other cards you were kind of testing, or was it really just like that was my core that I started with? And that was, again, I just love the double early mana goal as well. Like that just feels so good to get the double ramp. Um, but was there anything else like the I'm Totally Bountiful Cores, I think is the name of the card. I'm totally blanking on what it is now. Um, but anything else that kind of stuck out to you in terms of like that early game play? Um, for the early game, I, I'd like to go back to the late game, because the late game, I I tried everything. I tried Maduk, Nova, Combo, and then, you know, ultimately settled on Combo. Um, so I can kind of like go down the thing. So Maduk, it was just, like, way too slow. And, like, against a good white player, like, Maduk is by itself isn't going to do much. And then you have to play Black Lance, and I didn't like Black Lance. I love, like, right when I put Strong Draw in this, in this deck, I was like, I was in heaven. Like honestly, it was just, it was just way too good. It, it just felt so good in the deck. So like Maduke was already like I'm not I can't play, and then I tried Nova. Nova I was like really happy with, um, but like I was really paranoid about the mirror actually, because the mirror I felt like there would be a couple of uh, mirrors because the deck felt really strong. So I was like it couldn't just be me right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I tried the Nova and I just couldn't like beat like an Enterprise. Um, I guess shout out to Alex. They they were I didn't think about this. They played Bishop in there to yep. play around the Enterprise. I didn't have Bishop, so my deck was like they played Enterprise. I'm like, oh shit. You know? <laughs> uh <laughs> and then also against the mirror match is just it's not bad, but again, like once they get the Enterprise out, it was just you can't compete. So that's why I had to settle with combo, unfortunately. I mean not unfortunately. I mean it was actually it, it worked out very well. So yeah, it was very good. Yeah, and there's been kind of an interesting run, right? So um, we ha we saw it first pop up in Oceana. They did really well with it. It kind of went away for a while. Um, I took it to Atlanta, did the X1 run with it. Uh, and I think I was like one of the few, if I remember with Smack. And then at Pro Tour 3, actually, there was a ton of people. I remember tweeting about it. Um, and it had really low uh, conversion rates and just a really low performance overall in PT3. So what was kind of the turning point that you think going from the Pro Tour 3 meta where this is just you know, the worst, the worst top performing deck out of like the top eight archetypes to it won world championships, right? Like there's a massive disconnect there for what most people would say, like looking from one event to the next. So what do you think was a key turning point? Or, you know, maybe tell us a little bit, a little bit about your Swiss rounds. Did it just line up perfectly that way for you? Yeah. So I'll give you both. So, um, if like, like the list that were, or no, we're, uh, a PT3, um, it just, I mean, unfortunately, just to have a good yellow matchup, if I'm being honest. Like, because to beat yellow, you have to play a lot of Nexus removal. So, because you have to kill, once you kill all their Nexuses, then you can just, you know, clear their board and stuff, right? So, like, I don't think, like, those decks were beating yellow, and I think yellow was 38% of the field. Very large percent. So, yeah. <laughs> and, like, I think there was, a, the ramp deck was the third percent of the field. Yeah. So, I mean, and I think the big part of the deck was actually the Nebula. I don't know. I didn't see everyone's list, but I don't know how many people were playing Nebula. I know people were playing Burning Force, but I mean, like, it, it all comes down to basically they only had one week to do, you know, to to uh, test with the deck and whatnot. So, True. like, it's going to be hard to find all this stuff. But, you know, I had like a whole month or more, actually. Yeah, six weeks. Or something been... like that. Yeah, so yeah. I had a lot of time. Yeah. It, it was, I was like really juggling that or white control. And then, you know, ultimately decided this deck. Because, I mean, for me, it felt like just a better way control for me. Um, and then uh, for my matchups, I I played a little bit of everything. I mean, it was, nice. uh, yeah, it was like one ramp. Uh, you know, I, I faced uh, round five. It was like um, Colin and I faced Alberto. Alberto, Alberto was a really good matchup. The Alberto Sassy, he made top uh, eight, actually. That was that was round one, and honestly, like that guy's deck was actually so nice. I, I was like, wow. That was a, I thought he built like a really good deck, and we had a battle. Um, but 
Uh, but yeah, I mean, like I said, I faced a little bit of everything. I felt like this deck could dish out everything. And like um, when I did a different deck profile, they were like asking me, oh, what, what do you think your worst matchup is? I was like, honestly, a more greedier uh, ramp deck. And I, when I was looking at the list, it was like, I guess I have the greediest ramp deck. I didn't think I would have, but <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was like, just like, yeah, but I, I guess I had the greediest one. Yeah. And that's how I felt about playing it. Like it didn't, didn't have, like a lot of people talk about battle spirits and they think about the, Hey, every single matchup I play is going to go one of two ways. It's either going to be like the 70, 30, one way or another, or it's a mirror match. And people for the longest time thought like, that was the end all of be all of battle spirit matches, which um, we see this in one piece. We criminally see it in other Bondi games as well. We just have like the color dynamic and how they interact with one another. However, when I played the ramp deck, it felt a lot closer. Like depending on what you had for your sideboard, it really, there was no matchup, at least for the, you know, very unoptimized by comparison version of the list that I played that like, oh no, this is like a 90, 10 all of a sudden. So I hope we do see more of that, but I'm really excited to see what this, kind of shapes into for set four and to go back to what you said earlier right the the lower the ground stuff i definitely think it's going to stay the same you know we talk about draw power you have the ramp that gives you the cores to play the draw that helps find your late stuff so i think overall the theme is going to stay the same you know ramp cards draw package here's your top end um with that in mind looking to set four right we've seen ira and we have the hydra which will most likely you know define the meta at least in my opinion uh fable beast also got a cool uh five drop which i think is just gonna be even more unblockable shenanigans mm -hmm. but we didn't have anything that like really jumped out in terms of like this is now going to be the new end all be all other than like just ira being good so was there any other x rare that you really felt was something that can slide into this list or do you think we're going to see curse combo for the fifth and then sixth and then seventh set because hey curse combo is still just good it turns out but where do you think the list goes from here um i definitely would take out the scatties because you can't really play those anymore with yep. uh with the you know with the ira and uh hydra i i think i would just do like an ira nova package because i don't know if people know but ira is a uh, seagram so you can play that and then you can <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then you know you just you just heal back the utility roll board draw 10 cards or whatever not 10 but you know uh, and then you just gain all your life back. So it's like, it's a pretty good combo. And that's probably where I'd bring this deck more. It pro it seems like the meta, I mean, I haven't tested, you know, too much, but it seems like it's going to be really tempo due to the Hydra deck. Um, so your deck's going to have to, you know, be able to, you know, dish out some damage, basically. You can't just sit there. Yeah. Um, the yeah, giving rain on top of it was just dirty. Like, it was already pretty good. Like, hey, they're going to lose something. It has a decent BP threshold. Um, you can basically play it for free off the Nexus because you don't have to like sacrifice a card anymore, like with the free Ascension. Like, uh, you also ramp a core because why not? Um, it just does everything, which again, I'm terribly biased. I am a blue main. I am very excited for this Hydra. It's exactly what I was asking for. Uh, but I do agree it's going to be a bit of a tear on the format. And, you know, some people will say, like, oh, you can, you know, splash tokens so that you have, you know, some amount of blockers and maybe you can come back that way. And then you remember you're going against the color that can play Floodstream for three. And you're like, well, this is terrible for us. Uh, and then we also got Raging Tide, I think is a new card that will also board wipe a bunch of three or less. Uh, and then ramp you more cores, because why not? So I'm really curious to see where the Hydra... Um, again, I think Hydra and Ira I mentioned in the last video, but I put up like those two cards. Like For me personally, I think those are by far and away the two starting points of the bss 04 format and don't get me wrong i'm very excited for like the dredge and the new luster stuff i think there's some very fun decks that you can play but ultimately kind of those two really stand out to me so maybe looking beyond the smag deck itself but um is there a specific card or deck archetype that you're really looking forward to caleb in set four or is it just you know more smag with the ira top end as you just mentioned nope i i'm gonna say right here hail hydra <laughs> the, honestly that card is I thought Ira was the best uh, card in the set, and then I, um, you know, a lot of card players don't like to do this, but then I started reading, you know? I started reading <laughs> Hydra even more. I, gl I glanced at it, I'm like, oh, it's good. And then I was like, oh, wait, this card has two symbols. I didn't, I didn't see that, I didn't look down. Uh, and then I, once I saw that, I was like, okay, I have to build a deck with this. And then, like, when I'm, like, building it, like, the, the stuff around it is, like, kind of average or good. But the card is just so high that, like, Oh my gosh, if this deck had a lot of good cards surrounding it, it would be just the best deck. But I still think it's it's going to be really good, though. Yeah, um, I, I think, like, Strong Draw is definitely up there, but I know as we were talking, like, right before the recording, it's like, 
you have the nexus which you're gonna play anyways it's gonna ramp you cores and like that fixed half of blue's problem you mm -hmm. know within set three so like that's cool but then like you're playing squallow because it again the flam family type matters um it has a condition where it doesn't tap if you have a nexus but like you boil all that down you're like i am playing a 5k vanilla that's a three drop and that's what i'm excited about it's mm -hmm. not really exciting um mm -hmm. and even in the spells it's like cool that we got more removal for you know the ag or well one anti-aggro always appreciate it. i don't think anyone is sitting there like i love i apologize brian if you're watching this no one's like i love aggro it's the best thing in the world i know there's a few of you out there i apologize so people are really excited for like raging tides and stuff uh and then we got the four drop magic which i forgot off the top of my head but it basically pops a four or less which is like literally every key ascend yeah. target so like mm -hmm. we have more removal that way um yeah. but also as you mentioned like we're getting to this point where it's Hydra is going to attack. It's going to remove two things. It's going to restand itself because it has raid two and can attack three times because why not? Uh, and then you go, okay, do I have a dream bomb? No. Wait, I'm dead then, right? And then you're just like, all right, scoop it up. And there we are. So uh, we haven't, you know, seen a lot out of the, uh, well, set four is fully spoiled. We haven't seen a Vangalion stuff uh, other than the couple cards that are bought my card fest, but we kind of need more removal, like actual flash speed answers. So uh, with that in mind, kind of, you know, what would you like to see from a magic standpoint, right? I know that we made a, you know, Doomblade joke before the, yeah. the recording, but tell us a little bit about kind of what you're hoping to see in, in year two design standpoint for Battle Spirits. Uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of getting to the point. Um, like it was um, basically, yeah, I mean, there needs to be like at least some type of removal, like whether if it's like, uh, I don't know if people want to, uh, from Hearthstone, there was a big game hunter. Um, it was like a three, yeah, like a three, yeah, like something like that, right? Like it, maybe not three drop, maybe it's like a five drop, right? Yeah. Where like you just can kill something really big. You can't kill any of the the small guys, but you can kill the big dude. So maybe something like that, or like uh, how others people were saying, like Doom Blade. We just need something like that because like right now, I mean, it's even like Hydra, and then also like you know, like I think I'm really high on that uh, the Lighthouse. I think it's called Lighthouse. Um, uh, Seabed Lighthouse, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That card is... Uh, yeah, I wish I would have played that in my uh, small deck, actually, to be honest. Um, that card is very good. If you're playing that, they're going to have to set their Dream Bomb, so, like, you're already getting, like, two hits off. You know? Like, that's that, that's uh, that's also disgusting. So, I, there's a lot of stuff uh, for, like, basically how I'm going to try and combat that, just so right from the rip, is Baldagore. Because yeah. they're, they're milling you. And then, okay, well, you kill my... Because it mills you first, by the way. So if they... Let's say they hit your smog, which is oh, smog. Yeah. So it, you'll mill four, and then it dies. So then you can... um If you get Beldegore, then you can bring it out and block. So there is, you know, there is some counterplay with that. So as of right now, my only out really is either set the Dream Bomb <laughs> or or if you're playing green, play Thorn Prison. Um, yep. Yeah. And, and then, and then Beldegore. Like, that's, like, pretty much your only out to it right now. That I, you know, without testing. Right. And, mm -hmm. and to that point, too, you know, thinking about just, I think we can all agree, just hard removal. Um, for those that don't know, for, uh, Big Game Hunter, just as a quick reference point, let's say it's a five drop. I guess you would say zero reduction, but that would never happen in Battle Spirits. But it's a five cost. It has like a max power of 3K BP and um, on summon destroy something that has a cost of seven or more, which funny enough would be a blue card in this game but that's a different topic um so hey more blue cards and you can if you know me as a as a more controlling and mill player like you can very quickly at death and taxes you can very quickly piece together why blue is my favorite color and i'm hoping we get more of that you know cost-based removal uh, but i agree but what i'd really love to see is kind of like that next uh step up for it although it'd be too strong if it was printed in this set uh but burst spirits like one thing that we just have not seen yet that gives us another line of interaction, right? As you just mentioned, a lot of it for is, uh, hey, if I can do something after that attack trigger resolves, right? We have uh, the Swift Spirits, which I guess we did get a couple more of those. So, like, it at least lets you flash in a blocker. They're still going to restand, unfortunately. Um, so maybe Scoops is coming back. Um, we have the Beldegore Loops, which, as we just mentioned, and, hey, it goes well with Scoops, it turns out. Uh, but we don't have anything that's like, oh, my spirit died. Now I can bring something out of burst, right? So I would really like to see that third layer of interaction other than, like, Hey, here comes Scoop Owl back. So, spoiler, if you haven't picked up your Scoop Owls by now, you should probably pick them up. I don't expect that they're going to, like, spike in price anytime soon, but um, it's still looking pretty good for this next set. So, 
Um, and also, you know, kind of on that note, I guess we do got to get a little, little bit of credit to the uh, the new Swift deck that lets you play the Swifts at the end of your opponent's turn, and then you just like slam down the the Tokiwa and tap out their board, right? That's the other side of it where that's gonna have a very strong effect. And then shout out to our green players who finally got their hand reverse that we've been asking for, but you do have to discard a Prey Bird, um, which also Papa Bondi, please like let us see the cards that matter for family typing. Like, at the same time as we're getting these very underwhelming family spirits, right? I forget what, like, Prey Bird it was in particular, but, like, um, it's like a ramp one, I think. You're like, wow, I'm never playing this over Matt and Goal. And then we got the x rare and it's like, wow, I'm always playing this Prey Bird over every other possible ramp card in the game, right? There's that huge disconnect that we have uh, in spoilers. So I'm sure we'll see more of that in the next, uh, or I guess I should say set five, now that we've seen or know that dual double color cards are coming. So we're probably going to have that same, like, oh, I guess we got to wait for the double color stuff to see, like, what the payoff is going to be. But a uh, little bit of a digression for the spoiler season. But, you know, we are just, what, three weeks away at the time of recording this. So it's right around the corner that we at least get to open some boxes and be very excited for the uh, Evangelion collab cards to look forward to. And pre-releases, if you're LGS is going to be hosting them, like, a lot of good stuff coming soon for battle spirit saga and hopefully year two news like again we're recording this the thursday night before the friday update so i'm really hoping i'll be in the comments and be like oh my god year two news is so good like we know that they're removing the cash prizing from the grand opens and pushing it upwards to the pro fest as it's now called instead of pro tour uh, and then worlds will still have cashing as well so for those that don't know a lot of the reasons why regionals had to be in very specific location is because the cash prizing was going to be rewarded. So in theory, now with cash prizing removing for those, Bondi can host more regionals, which then makes it easier for people to qualify. So you don't have to be as stressed about, you know, making those $500 flights work if you were trying to qualify. So hopefully we'll see more of those. But with, uh, with the, you know, set design and conversation around the double colors and even Golden Collabs and all that stuff out of the way, you know, is there anything else that you would like to see from a organized play standpoint? Maybe like a wish list. Again, just the time of recording this is a little bit funny. We tried to hold off for news and it didn't, you know, come when we wanted to. But, you know, what do you think would be nice for year two of Battle Spirit Saga organized play? Again, wish list or things that you want them to improve on? Um... Maybe so. The first thing is like I hope that they keep at least similar pricing for the Pro Fest, and then is Worlds just called Worlds still? Or yeah, I think it's just actual World okay, Championship okay. So still. Pro, okay. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, hopefully they'll keep you know in the same similar uh, ballpark, and then maybe the Grand Opens they can you know be in more or I guess just different areas than they were before because yeah they weren't at very different locations too often. So yeah, so I think that would be nice. Um, I guess, like, they really, I think they really should just start working on, like, you know, from the ground up, you know, building the local scene and stuff uh, and whatnot. That would be, you know, I think this year would be a very nice year to do that, I think. Um, um, and maybe if they can, like, communicate more as well, you know, it would be a little bit better as well, you know. <laughs> yep, I think we're maybe, uh, yeah. all feeling on that end. So, um, to the local point, I will say at least we know that there's going to be some uh Pro, what's the correct wording on the sequence of wording? It's a ProFest qualifier that will happen at the LGS level. So you can also buy, you know, skip by the regionals if you get lucky enough to host one of those. But again, there's no details uh, right now, but I think that's at least a step in the right direction. Um, I'm sure, uh, shout out to Bulldog community um, in Indiana. I'm sure they're going to get an event because they're, uh, you know, close to Gen Con. They met with Bondi last year. They're just in a good location for travel, at least in the Midwest, uh, for us to drive in. Obviously, other regions I can't speak to because I've been a Midwest grinder for card games all my life. Sorry, I've just been stuck here. Um, but I'm sure, you know, we could see similar things. Like, I know Atlanta would even be, like, a good hub for a lot of people. I know there's a shop down there that they had fun with. But um, other than that, you know, any, any kind of, like, last thoughts? Like, obviously, you did super well year one. You crushed it you are definitely you know the world champ and best player like confirmed that like that this really cemented that um we did have three different pro or i should say all three pro tour winners in top four which is just a phenomenal thing to see like it and any type of, of oh, high-end card game competition that's exactly what you want to see but um other than that any kind of closing thoughts before we get to the wrap-up for year one like how it went overall obviously it had hiccups but just a free you know a free pass to say uh kind of what's on your mind and, and you know frame it how you want of kind of like a year one look back 
I mean, like I said, it was just like like it was crazy because like what it was like in June, right before the first pro tour, I was like, geez, like you know, again, like man, am I, I'm I'm putting I'm grinding so hard. Is this gonna work out? Is this gonna be worth you know worth it? Like putting all these hours in. So it's like crazy to look back now and like seeing that, um, like all my I guess all my hard work paying off. Um, so yeah, I mean, honestly, just looking back, it's just such crazy. It hasn't even been a full year, by the way. It's only been like. True. It's like what, like seven months, like kind of crazy. Like uh, June yeah. To, uh, yeah, it's been like, yeah, it hasn't even been like a full year yet. So, I mean, hopefully, you know, let's keep getting better. I can just, you know, build off this and, you know, um, obviously, you know, there's some luck involved too. Yeah, it's a card game. So, and, you know, hopefully I get lucky. Hopefully I can, you know, bring the best stack and I can just do better for year two. And also, I mean, uh, should I do shoutouts now or? Yeah, that's all I was just gonna, I was just gonna wrap that up oh, with. Okay, uh, okay, okay, I didn't know. Um, <laughs> no, like I said, he's already been on here because he won a pro tour and everything. Like he, he knows what's coming. Uh, no, but I was just gonna say that's great, and you're right that uh, again, Battle Spirits launched in April of last year, and funny enough, we're getting our anniversary cards in the August set of set five. So I don't know if this is going to be like a – well, I guess one thing I will say is they are changing the events to be at the start of set releases instead of the end. So that's actually really super exciting. So the meta will always be fresh for like the Pro, pro Fest. I got to stop saying Pro Tour. Pro Fest and Worlds will always be the new format, which is super hype. Um, but I think there are a lot of good things coming um, but I think this is definitely going to be a rebuild and very understandably a rebuild year for us. So it's up to us as a community, go talk to your locals, get other people interested. And I really do think that Evangelion stuff, I keep seeing it on Twitter and Facebook. People are still joining in the Facebook, but once that's actually out in the wild and people see those cards, uh, they were on display at Bondi Card Game Fest. And I think they were absolutely gorgeous. Obviously, I'm a little bit biased because I am an Evangelion fan and I am very excited that Squallow got a uh, Eva alt art. So I'm absolutely buying four of those for my blue deck and very excited uh but i think there's gonna be some more good stuff coming since they're doing the collab set and then of course we're getting even more evangelion alt arts in bss 05 so with that now you can do your shout outs uh, for anyone that you want in particular to give props to year one um and then anyone that you want to like uh you know challenge i know let's shout out to true duelists they've been good all year long mm -hmm. but i don't know if you want to get a little throwing down the gauntlet there for uh year two Whoa. for those that are sticking around <laughs> Well, first, I mean, I would like to say TD, actually. I would like to give them a shout-out because I think, like, without, like, healthy, you know, competition, I don't know if they saw it that way, but, like, for me, it was always, like, you know, I, I, w I really want to do good. I want to, like, you know, play them and then, you know, beat them, right? Like, that's – so it gave me, like, a lot of healthy motivation to, like, do better in the game, actually. So I do – I will shout them out, actually. Yeah. And I, then uh, I would mm – -hmm. Also, and I, I would like to – so yeah. I was just oh, going to yeah. mention with the true duelist of them because I got to give them proper uh, proper credit because I credited them like way earlier. You can go back. I think it was either our first interview or like one uh, one of the top eights around that time. It's like we need more people like true duelists in the game to your point that can push that competitive envelope because we all become better players at the end of the day with that kind of focus. Right. And huge shout out to the community overall because they've been super great from the competitive players and we're generally always good to you know bounce ideas off of or have like the friendly banter between each one so it was really good competitive year for for year one i really hope that continues into year two but all right sorry go ahead you can get, do the other shout outs now no, no, you're okay. You're okay. <laughs> um so yeah i mean obviously like this whole like you know i was playing a lot with the the d boys you know d boys and was it cc boys yeah cc, CC boys <laughs> d boys and cc <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so, like without them, like, you know, we played like, you know, so many hours and like without them, I, you know, I definitely could have won this, like for sure. I, I was so prepared. Um, like, you know, like that whole group, um, you guys know who you are. There's like eight of you guys. So I <laughs> don't want to miss anyone if I say something. Uh, and then, um, I would like to special shout out to Andrew and uh, the Brick Boys. Um, they definitely, yep. <laughs> Uh, we would like to, you know, talk about the uh, ramp deck and whatnot, and um, like just how we wanted, how we envisioned the deck and whatnot. So um, he's the one that gave me the full attack, actually. So really kudos to him. That was, yeah, when he told me that, my whole, my whole, my my, my mind just exploded. I'm like, why didn't I think of this? Because <laughs> I was just like so worried about the mirror, and then that just made me okay. I'm not worried anymore. Um, and then, uh, oh yeah, lastly, uh, hot dogs. Yep. <laughs> you want to give some <laughs> you want to give some context to the uh listeners around the hot dog or are we just going to say praise hot dog and and go on from there 
<laughs> so basically, every time I eat a hot dog, I do good at BSS events. <laughs> That's all you need to know. <laughs> this man powers up in real time. It's crazy. Yep. Um, yep, yep. <laughs> But yeah, so thank you again, Caleb, for joining us. The GOAT of year one. Hopefully you have a good run in year two as well. For anyone that's looking to get into Battle Spirits uh, competitively, uh, this is the guy to beat. You'll see him at the top tables. You'll see him being a consistent high performer. Like I said, like X2 is the worst that you did, if I'm not mistaken, like all season long, right? I don't think you actually dropped Oh, no, no. Oh, oh, yeah. I guess I should have probably went into that, but um, uh, I, at Atlanta, I did uh, X3. Okay. X3 dropped. Everyone, yeah, everyone gets oh wait i do remember that now <laughs> see all right you brought it you brought it back and i'm totally <laughs> all right i'm gonna hold you that against you but hey like spider-man says everybody gets one that said thank you so much again caleb congrats for joining us here on the champion's corner and i do have to make a little bit of an announcement that for again if you watch my recap video this will likely be the last champions corner at least for a while we might bring it back with the pro fest winners uh but because of the other events that i'll be traveling to and doing some other stuff kind of behind the scenes locally with fusion world and all the other bondi games i'm very excited for union arena um there just won't be time with the hopeful understanding that there's going to be like even more regionals next year like it just won't be feasible from a standpoint but i would very much love to have the pro fest winners and world champions on the channel for an interview so definitely keep that in mind if you win so with that, my friends, hopefully some really good year two news soon so we can start playing and, and get excited to travel to events. At the very least, BSS 04 is right around the corner and we get to get to open some very exciting products. So with that, until then, stay safe, stay hydrated, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.